Um, Podium podcast, last one of the year. Honestly, my favorite shows. As much as I love all my guests, you guys are so unhinged in these episodes. <laughs> Not that I want to set the uh, the bar, you know, too early. But how's everybody, how are you guys feeling? I know it's open ended question, but like. You know, oh. let's let's start with champ, 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 champ. Whew. James, how how are you feeling I'm, after all this? I'm feeling great. You know what I mean. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> take our shoes off, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after a hard, hard season, uh, you know, competing so much, traveling so much, Connor, it, uh, you're used to it. You're used to the travel. Connor got a taste for it this year. It does take it out of you. And uh, to be at this point right now, where we can kind of relax. We got a, a few months to reset and just enjoy the moment. Uh, I feel like we've all had our you know, share of success this year and uh, ups and downs. But for me personally, I am delighted, obviously. Right? It's been beyond yeah. a dream weekend for me. Uh, but I'm definitely ready to <laughs> RTR, ready to rest. <laughs> ready to rest. Ready to cut the lawn, right? That was yeah. good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Freddie, what about you? How, how are you feeling after this? Uh, uh, happy, <laughs> elated, and uh, you know, mowing the lawn. You know, it's it's. I have I have two friends that love mowing the lawn. I I'm the third one. I okay. love doing it too. So I have a D, 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 DJ friend back home. He okay. loves coming home mowing the lawn. I love doing it, but I have a tiny little 30 by 30 meter. What is that? It's 100 not, by 100 feet. That's not bad. And then I see this <laughs> this dude showing up with a freaking a big 10, M. 10 ton <laughs> mower for his estate. I'm like, okay. All right, I see your big balls there, big guy. <laughs> it was funny. In the first podcast, it made me laugh so much because I said to you that I love mowing the lawn. I'll never let and, go. And you, whoever edited the podcast, showed somebody with a, a strimmers and they're cutting a piece of grass the size of this tin. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you did me dirty there. I might have been Kyle. Yeah, Kyle's yeah, here, yeah. so yeah. That was him right there. You can blame uh, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Yeah, that made me laugh. So that was kind of one back at you. Yeah. Yeah, no, my good friend i think you might know him alan linehan um, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah the <laughs> he's a drifter yeah 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 back in ireland like you've yeah. got a good memory aren't, man aren't all the irish drifters so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it. yeah it's he, a country he uh he suggested coming stopping by one day with his kid and he brought over his big m and uh he was like, right, let's cut your grass. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And then we put my little ride on next to his huge, uh, huge machine. It was, it was fun. That's crazy. Um, Connor, what about you? How are you feeling? Yeah, I guess the same, to be honest. Just glad that it's kind of <laughs> over. You know, as James mentioned, for me, this is the first taste I've got of doing both championships. And, uh, yeah, I guess I take my hat off to him even more because it's stressful. It's yeah. many hours in a plane, many distractions, and just trying to, you know, I guess just enjoy it. For me, honestly, you know, I couldn't have asked for any more for the first year here. And But to be honest, at the same time, as the guy said, you enjoy the small things at this time of the year when it finishes and just relax and yeah. uh, chill out, Have drink a pint. Fun. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, few, I'd say. Talk, <laughs> yeah, talk about drifting as always. But yeah. at the same time, it's a nice time of the year. But, uh, yeah, good way to finish it off. Sitting next to, you know, two guys that literally have dominated the sport at, at every level is, is quite cool. And I couldn't ask for any more, to be honest. What um, this this goes for both Freddie and and for you. What what kind of pressure does James's accomplishment put on you? I mean, you've got to represent literally the same road and be like, yo, this is my neighbor. And then for Freddie, I mean, you you were the guy. You were the guy in this sport. You were the guy in FD that everyone was talking about. Everybody wanted to take down that you know three time champ. You were so dominant for so long. And I'm that, sorry, that's not like trying to be backhanded, but. How much pressure does it put on you guys now where James is like, okay, four, does that motivate you to get your championship in both series? Does that motivate you to go for number four? Do, it, do you feel that yet, or do you think that'll be like a Long Beach thing? I I definitely feel it, and yeah. I, I remember when James and Peter came in 2017 and just uh, quickly elevated what everyone wanted to do. Like, they show that there's a next level, yeah. right? 2017, 2018, I think... Not all of those three years, you you were necessarily dominating, mm -hmm. even if you won all of them, which is an incredible feat. But but you showed everyone that everybody needed to step up, and what happened is a lot of people did. Yeah, a lot of people got better because of you guys. And now you know you came in last year, and it was really interesting to see how how James worked out that Mustang, ultimately made it better, and now you're dominating that car. You're on top of it. You have, you've not only made a car that suits you well you've elevated the whole team mm -hmm. and i see it in, in in ben's car i see it in vaughn's car and it, it it's that whole i call it almost an 
autistic uh, level of dedication. Yeah. Because that's what Steph and I feel like. When we're in the zone, we're doing well. We have certain time, certain times where we feel like we do well. Like Atlanta this year, we feel like we're in that groove. Yeah. And that, that, that's when everybody, everything clicks and you're in that zone. And, and those are the moments we feel like we can beat you. But that's one event out of eight, right? And we, we just need to get better uh, at not only mimicking and understanding and learning from what you guys are doing, but finding our own groove. And I'm definitely motivated for that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Connor, what about you? Yeah, I think, honestly, it's the same choice of words. It motivates. You know, I think you can't, you know, disagree with that. I feel like I'm probably at the other scale of trying to maybe chase my first one, you know, coming back next year, hopefully. But, you know, I think... Uh, you're kind of I'm sitting here thinking oh my god I'm a, am I ever going to be able to beat the records what this guy does because right. he's you know, I don't think he's going to retire anytime <laughs> soon and I'm like come on now don't win 10 of those or something you know but at the same time as it always comes down to as Asbo said for me this year was nothing to do with winning a championship I've literally jumped into a car what is uh, you know not no disrespect to Rome he's done an amazing job he gave me the chance to you know show my name and FD but you know that car is is nowhere near where I need it to be to win a championship it's steering wheel is on the ring, wrong side there's <laughs> stuff happening but you know at the same time Rome has showed me a lot about what drifting is and and I feel like for me it's been a super good foundation because and it left some of the story to be told you know yeah I wanted a dream to come in and, you know, I guess repeat what James done and win Long Beach and go on. And of course, the championship wasn't possible with, with missing a round. But now I kind of look at it that it leaves some of the story be left to be told. I know there's a lot more in the tank from my side, like 100 percent. And now I go back to the drawing board and, and hopefully run my own program here and take responsibility myself. And, and, you know, just try elevate, you know, what I can do as a driver. And in my opinion, I always have had a feeling that for me to do that, it's it's nice to be in charge. And, you know, even this weekend, my brother is here and having those people involved and my dad is wrenching on the car. And tonight's a prime example. I'm on the podium in a prospect car with, I couldn't even tell you, to be honest, what shocks are on the car, you know? So it's like, <laughs> and I'm driving at the highest level. So I look at it as, you know, as a huge motivation to see what James is doing. And, you know, we've seen all what happened last year. And I spoke to you on a podcast at the start of this year. And I yeah. said, you know, like everyone's sitting there being like, oh, James Dean has lost his touch. James Dean is this. And I'm just uh, like, no, you called it. You did come call on. This. I'm just yeah. like, dude, are you for real right now? You know, and I, I look at, I guess, you know, for me this year, watching James win and, and the mindset, what he had to shift, leaving all those negatives behind. And he knew deep down that it was the car and you need to figure it out. But when you have all those people at you, you know, and I can only imagine the pressure what this guy has. For me, it motivates me. It motivates me as a mindset. It motivates me as a driver. And more than anything, it motivates me in dedication to be more responsible. You know, I do stuff sometimes and I'm like, okay, I should have cared. You know, hitting Asbo in the last corner in New Jersey was probably the biggest downer of my career, I would say. Sorry, Oof. but that's true. <laughs> and, you know, but I look but, at those things and they're all, I'm 21 years old and I'm, on, I'm riding a wave. It's my first year here. And it's just like, now I look back at that stuff and I'm like, okay, I struggled with the car, but I probably could have done some stuff better. But, you know, I couldn't change anything. It's good. Imagine being 21 again. I'd be hitting up a lot of girls. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the advantage I have, though. I, that's I, what I'm yeah. I about. forget, you know, I forget because I know Connor, obviously, like Jared says, since a baby, I held you, I, I put you to sleep and all this stuff. That That's not true, right? <laughs> you but I did sleep? know him from yeah. pretty much when he was born. Um, but, you know, it's... It's just been crazy because you're 21, right? And it feels like for me, you're almost my age yeah. because you started drifting yeah. when you were nine years old. Yeah. Like my, my best friend Michael back home, I think you know Michael, my my Gianna. spotter. Yeah, she yeah. yeah, you're very good. I know it's crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's impressive. But Michael <laughs> Sheehan uh, sat with Connor in his first yeah. ever drift day, Old in Connor's Hamburg. first every uh, ever track day, and Connor was so small. He could reach the pedals, but he didn't have the strength in his arm to pull the handbrake. That's so awesome. So Mike, he knew what to do exactly, and Michael was doing the handbrake. Yeah, so, so Michael wow. used to see the clutch go in, and then he'd pull the handbrake. Yeah, that's that's awesome. crazy. It's yeah. impressive, actually. It, it, yeah. was, it was unreal. So to see Connor from that age and grow and grow and grow, and yeah, like I, I feel like you're way older than you are, and it's the same for Jack. You know, yeah, 100 percent. Jack, I haven't seen him since he was sat in with him first when he was 12 years old, and uh, watched him grow. And how old is he now? 25? 25, yeah. Yeah, Jeez, 25. Kind of old. Uh, but like, they started so young. <laughs> yeah. Like Manoa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you just forget how old they are. Right. Because when you have to battle even Manoa, he was 14 when I was battling him yeah. in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And you're like, right, if I don't push here and take a risk, he's going to beat me. 
Yeah. But if you hit him, you feel guilty because as a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's like... It's, I just hit a child. It's, no, it's yeah, one. I know. <laughs> so it's a, it's a weird mindset to try to figure out. But yeah, man, drifting is, is special. You don't see that in any other motorsports with the young young kids battling no, the, the veterans, level. let's say. No, not to this level. We, we've seen it in a few... I mean, realistically, the closest that I think we've seen it at this high of level would be F1 with like Max Verstappen coming in at that age. But the fact that, yeah, 13, 14 year old is not uncommon anymore. And we're hearing about six and seven year olds driving. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's it's crazy. It's just crazy. I, I feel like for you, Connor, it's you, you're younger. You're two years younger than I was when I came to the U.S. the first time. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Right. And you've done a lot of stuff in Europe leading up to that. I was a total fresh off the boat rookie when I came here. I had no freaking clue what I was doing. So I think for uh, I you... Think you did. I, I remember I, I, seeing him uh, the first time I ever. I had ideas, but, this guy? but not to his level. Not oh, at no. all. Oh, no. But the oh, whole oh, sport. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> Who's this? So, so I feel like for you, Connor, the biggest thing is, is managing... It's not getting burnt out. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's doing this to where it, it retains the fun in it. You know, you keep doing it because it's fun, growing with everything. You're so good already, but make sure, make sure you don't uh, burn a candle and both both, both ends. ends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. So no, 100%. It's a fine line. Yeah. 100. And I've seen it. You know, obviously, you know, watching drifting my whole life. Even before I started drifting, you know, I was watching Jack and James in Irish level. The way McKeever was also insanely, still is unbelievably good, but. Mm. You know, I feel like at a national level, we were given, you know, the everything what we needed. You know, it was like we had the opportunity of James going to win the biggest championship in the world, what he done in 2017. <laughs> what's this guy doing? <laughs> is this, oh, this, well, is thing, oh, this, this became a thing oh really quick. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you want your 15 uh, minutes uh, of fame? Okay. That yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, this okay. is... Is this, is this how the whole FD staff is getting their photo? Oh, when, yeah. uh -oh. when, when is Andy going to get his podcast? Oh, Jesus. Oh, this, Andy, we're going to end the most, the... the most pleasant man in FD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the dirty panda? You know, it's great to see him smiling. I've yeah. seen him smile a lot. Yeah, I think he's, so, he's as happy as we are as drivers yes. for the last like, event. Yes. This is my life. We like, finally get into a heartfelt conversation. Everyone's like, no, no, we can't do that. We can't get all this eyed I mean... Yeah, anyways, I, guys, I, <laughs> Off track. I, yeah, I know, I know. I, I really don't want to hold you guys any longer. I know you guys have so much going on. Um, I'm excited for your off seasons. I'm super pumped for what comes next year. I've heard rumors. I've heard tales of what's going on, even if it's staying tell us, the same. Tell us, tell us what you hear. I mean, this dude doing his own thing. He already talked about that. I mean, James Dean used to go to Papadakis, and then Osmo's <laughs> going to go to RTR. And, no, it's good. I think he's getting engaged. No? Oh, my God. Okay. Where's Dolph? We're here. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have to do something. Oh, okay. I was going to make a joke Podcast off air. Yeah, no. Podcast finito. No. <laughs> I actually thought it was going to be on the podium, to be honest. Oh, yeah, oh, right? <laughs> now, guys, uh, I, I, what I want to say is, um, from the fans, from FD, from myself, one, thank you for this. Thank you for kind of becoming friends with everybody. And, and like, it, for me, it's, it's, it's a crazy honor that I got to watch you guys for a long time. And now I get to call you guys my friends, which is still weird. I don't know why, but it's just, it still is for me. And, and I hope that everybody listening gets to feel closer to you guys, especially through these shows, yeah, which great. is my favorite part. Because at the end of the day, they're going to uh, get to know more about you guys. And, and yeah, and I'm pumped for the off season. I'm pumped for next year. I'm pumped for you guys to put on some freaking shoes. Um, <laughs> that, oh, okay. Was that or was it not the most fun podium? It was. It was, it was, it was, it was super good, actually. <laughs> I thought the shoe was good, and then there was, <laughs> yeah, there was, was race boots being flying. Do you taste right. foot I got in a shoe? I've never done Rubber. A shoe. Tastes like rubber. Really? You taste foot? I don't know. I haven't really tasted one before, uh, so no, I can't I compare it. I, I, I never <laughs> tasted I anyone else's foot. It's kind of like licking someone's ear. like licking someone's ear? Oh, I'm Connor, heard. yeah. No, not Sorry. me. Yeah, no one wants me to sign their shoe, don't worry. Uh, but uh, any closing words for you guys? While Jacob, we... yes. thanks for coming into FD. Dude. You, you make it even better. Uh, like these that. shows, your color commentary, it's great. I've seen you work at Galt in Europe. I've obviously <laughs> seen you work here. You know what you're talking about. And what your level of, ex <laughs> your level of excitement. Mean? Happy Shug birthday to this dude, too. For once, quick. we... That, no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys play each other good. It's no, awesome. Good. So thanks yeah. for coming. I got him with a dig earlier in the broadcast. He's still holding good. me to it. That's all. What, what was it? 
Uh, he's, I, he asked me what kind of drift car I'd want to build. I still want a diesel Mercedes. That'll never die. And I was like, what do you want? Like a limo so you can actually fit in it? Oh. And, and he just shut it wow. down. Oh. I got to get a dig every once in a while. I mean, I just made fun of him for being tall. That's all. Uh, but um, cool. Any yeah. closing remarks to you guys before I uh, let you uh, hit the bar? Yeah, as, as you said, amazing what you're doing for the sport, these podcasts and your knowledge of watching drifting, you know, live reporting is not easy to no. do, especially because it's so subjective. You know, right. any of us could be wrong when you call something because you, you just never know what actually happened. I get it wrong but, a lot, don't worry. I don't know, but we, <laughs> so do we. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard, it's challenging, but thank you for what you do. Um, huge thanks to all the fans that watch these podcasts. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I enjoy them myself. And... Uh, it's a pleasure sharing with you guys again. It's basically your agree. podcast now. You've been on here for <laughs> half the season. You're living so on it. I know. Paying, paying rent. Oh, yeah. Same Good for times. me. Uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. I just quickly want to say on my behalf, thank you to everybody who made me so welcome to FD. You know, I think being a fan of drifting worldwide, watching it for so many years, but literally when I came here, honestly, everybody was open arms, all the organizers, all you guys, all the drivers. Every time we battled it out on track, you know, it was cool to see that we can sit around as normal people afterwards. And I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, they definitely hate each other. And we're nah. at the bar again and probably nah, live with yeah, each other yeah, afterwards, yeah. but you know. Yeah. We <laughs> always have a good time. We always like, have so a good time. So many times, like your first win this year, like we yeah. were just parting with you yeah, at your, sitting, at chatting your side up all night. And like, same it's with good. you. And yeah. <laughs> it's just like, we just have good chats, yeah. good talks about the future, how it can be improved, and we're all addicted to it. Yeah, it, for it's sure. It's amazing. We just yeah. love this part, and we're happy you guys love it too. And yeah. uh, gentlemen, thanks again. Peace out. Catch everybody on the next one. Thank See you, you guys. Soon. Thank, Thank you. you.